If you're looking for an alternative to Zoom, uh, maybe you've got uh, some issues with uh, resolution. If you're one of the people like me using uh, Ecamm Live virtual camera or a virtual camera into Zoom, uh, or maybe you're using Zoom just for occasional calls and don't want to really justify the expense of it, but you would still like more features than you get just with the free Zoom plan, uh, or perhaps you're just finding Zoom is getting a little bit bloated with too many settings, too confusing, too much overwhelm. Well, whatever the case, Vivo Meetings could be the platform for you. And in this video, I'm going to talk through some of its features and some of the things that I think set it apart and what really uh, piqued my interest in it. Now, full disclosure, uh, this and some other upcoming content on my channel are a paid collaboration with Vivo Meetings. Uh, and what you find is as you start uh, creating content on YouTube, as your channel grows, as my channel has grown, uh, I found that more and more companies have been reaching out, uh, you know, offering me either uh, products for review or asking for uh, collaborations uh, with, you know, paid promotions and things like that. Um, and uh, the majority of these just get rejected outright. You know, generally, I'm only going to be talking about something that I'm uh, a big fan of that I've been using for a long time. Um, but uh, Vivo Meetings was something that was new to me when uh, when they reached out to me. Um, and so I did take a look at it, though. And there was a few things there that really just grabbed my attention. Because uh, as I say, I use Ecamm Live virtual camera into Zoom. And anybody who has spent any amount of time in the Ecamm Live community, uh, where we want to level up our on screen presence, our online meetings, uh, using all of the production quality that you can get from Ecamm Live or indeed from OBS or any other of these sort of live production tools routing these into Zoom to just have, uh, you know, another level on your uh, on your digital stage, as I like to call it. Well, if you have been in that world, you will know that uh, resolution is the bane of our lives sometimes. Um, and uh, certainly with Zoom, the number of hoops that you have to join, uh, jump through just to get that high quality resolution. And first of all, you need to be on a paid Zoom plan. So that's the right off the bat. If you want to use Ecamm Live virtual camera into Zoom, uh, you need to be on a paid plan because uh, you can't actually get this uh, higher resolution. And just to sort of explain what this issue is, um, Zoom and all of these meeting platforms are generally just assuming that you're using a regular camera into the meeting. Um, and so when that is going into uh, uh, to Zoom, that's fine if you're just on camera. But what if you're actually using Ecamm, OBS or applications like this to share some uh, information on your screen or to bring in presentations and so on? Those are going to have necessarily sort of text on them. Um, and so if uh, Zoom is just thinking that you've got a, a regular webcam, it's not going to be thinking that, oh, hang on a minute, I need to make sure that you've got this high quality resolution. Um, it saves that specifically for the screen sharing. So uh, this is the issue that we're, we're trying to constantly overcome. Now, if you are on a paid Zoom plan, you can request that they upgrade your resolution. You can then go and enable this in the settings. Uh, you can then go and enable this in the settings on the, the web first and then your, your Zoom uh, application settings as well. Uh, and then there are a whole series of other um, uh, checks that you need to have. You need to be in full screen mode in Zoom. Your participants need to be in full screen mode. Uh, you need to have all of these other different things that you have to jump through. I mean, so much so that one of the most downloaded uh, uh, PDFs on my website is the Zoom settings guide to help people uh, achieve this, this thing of just having uh, a high quality resolution. So one of the things that really piqued my interest about Vivo meetings was you as the uh, the host, you as the meeting organizer, just get to simply choose what resolution you're on. And you don't need to be on the highest plan. Uh, there are a range of plans, which we'll look at a little bit later. But basically, uh, you are in control of that resolution. Now, obviously, there is still a, you know, a certain bandwidth requirement, but that is to be expected. You know, if my bandwidth dropped right now, even just streaming to YouTube, then there would be a degradation of, uh, of resolution. But that aside, um, the resolution is a huge thing. Um, and it just seemed to me that uh, this coupled with a load of other things that I'll go through, uh, just felt like, you know, it's quite a, a refreshing platform to, uh, to take a look at. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But I did just want to get out of the way this uh, full disclosure about this is a paid collaboration. But uh, as always, these views are, are my own. And there's, uh, there's no onus on me to, uh, to say anything in particular in this. It's just really just my general sort of views. So what I thought I'd do is um, I'd fire up a meeting, which I've already done, and then would go through some of the settings uh, and the sort of planning of meetings and things like that and go through some of the feature sets uh, and also their roadmap for future updates as well, because they've been very open and clear about, uh, about that. Uh, just a quick chat to everyone in the chat. Hey, Parker, great to see you here. And uh, George, great to see you too as well. Uh, hey, Chris, great to see you here. Um, you're the, here for the new Zoom. Yes, well, it's, uh, it's a great alternative. Um, and uh, Paul, great to see you too. And uh, finally, Jesse, 
great to see you as well. And uh, yeah, Jesse's in uh, the Take One Tech Academy, and we've been talking about this uh, a lot, really, as uh, as uh, another alternative uh, to uh, to Zoom. So let's uh, first of all uh, just pop over to this little meeting that I've got going. Uh, I'll just quickly show you uh, the interface. I'm just going to switch my uh, my video off on this uh, this iPad for the time being. Um, so this is the, uh, the the interface. I'll get into this in more detail a little bit later. You know, it's a meeting platform. <laughs> well, what do you expect? Uh, Panelled views and so on, uh, or tiled uh, uh, tiled participants there on the screen. Uh, so, but this is just to give you a, a little peek at the sort of look of the uh, of the interface. But what I want to do first, though, is I want to go through some of the settings because this is one of the things that um, I talked about in. Uh, it was actually in when I did the event uh, last uh, last month, the Digital Stage Revolution, and we were talking about Zoom, and it was all about you know leveling up your on-screen presence. Um, and the uh, the question or the comment came in from one of the uh, the attendees of that uh, event that Zoom just seems to be getting so bloated now. There is so much that they're adding in uh, all the time that uh, sometimes uh, you know it's a it's a mystery to, as to where to find anything. Certainly when you look in the uh, the web settings, uh, it's just a, it's just a mass of things, and sometimes it's uh, it's good to have all of these features and options but other times you just want a little bit of simplicity don't you so uh, let's take a look then at the settings for vivo meetings and i'm not going to go through all of them it's got the usual things you know your account picture uh, your password two-factor aut authentication all of this kind of stuff uh, down on this right hand side so all pretty uh, self-explanatory but the couple of things that i want to just go into is audio and video first of all um so uh, we've got the uh, video uh, you can choose to whether you want it sort of reverse basically or uh, as folks would uh, see it so display my videos as others would see it um so they're going to see it exactly the the correct way around um and i prefer to look at it like that as well well, specifically because with Ecamm, uh, you know, I've got text on screen and things like that. So uh, that's how I want it to be displayed to me. Some people prefer to have their image reversed so that it's more like a mirror. But when you get used to sort of live streaming and that, then certainly uh, you want to uh, you want to just be able to see it as it's going to go out. Um, simple settings though you know audio uh, microphone and speaker and there's obviously a test built into that as well um you know how in zoom we've got all these different things with background noise removal uh, echo cancellation and there's multiple different settings uh, and then we've got that thing original sound for musicians which frustratingly um you have to go and toggle on every time so just uh, without going in making this a zoom thing but um with uh, with zoom if you want to have just if you've got a good audio setup maybe you've got a roadcaster uh, you've got a good microphone or something like that and you just want to have that high quality audio going into your your meeting um, in zoom there's a bit of a dance that you have to go through to enable all of that and then uh, it's using this thing called original sound for musicians but then it's just not toggled on automatically in every meeting so it's kind of one of the the checklist of things you have to do when you start up a meeting is click on original sound if you forget to do that then there might be background noise suppression that's going to knock out any background sound effects and things like that that you actually do want to put into your production here, it's just very simple, uh, either noise cancellation on or off. So it's either going to filter out the background noise uh, or it isn't. And it's just going to let through the, uh, the you know, unfiltered. So that's exactly what I want. Uh, another simple thing there that we've got in Zoom as well, hold down space key to temporarily unmute. Always a great feature if you're in other people's meetings um, or even in your own and you're just muted and you don't want to temporarily unmute. Um, and then we've got the Ecamm Live uh, virtual camera. Now I'm actually looking at this in the uh, uh, in the in the, the browser. However, just know that there is a desktop app and it looks exactly the same. But I'm doing it in here just because it enables me to uh, sort of zoom it up a little bit. Um, however, one thing to note is uh, by default uh, the uh, the application doesn't allow for virtual cameras. Now that's kind of what I'm talking about, isn't it? Taking a virtual camera like Ecamm into uh, into the application. However, just like in Discord, where we've got that little terminal code that we can uh, we can type in uh, to enable the virtual camera if I just come back down to here so I've opened up terminal.app uh, and all we need to do is uh, just come into here uh, and it's not actually that one that one's the one for discord which I've just had to do because discord makes you do that every time <laughs> um, but if I go back up here uh, this is the uh, the little bit of code that we need to add in so it's this um, uh, vivo meetings frameworks uh, helper plugin dot app so this is the the little bit of code you'll find that link down in the description so if you are going to try out vivo meetings um, then uh, and you want to use your ecamm live virtual cam or obs virtual cam or any virtual camera um, then just go into uh, your 
terminal, so open terminal.app, uh, and then you literally just copy the code out of the description of this video, uh, paste that in, and then when you hit uh, return, it's gonna ask for your, uh, your system password, click that, and then you are done. Um, and just make sure that uh, either Vivo Meetings app is closed when you do that, or that you, you close it down and reopen it afterwards. But assuming that you have done that, uh, then, your Ecamm Live uh, virtual camera will just show up in the list here, uh, so you can pick that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that is the uh, the first the first major thing that uh, uh, we want to get out of the way is that you can obviously add in your uh, your virtual camera. Uh, another thing then to uh, go through, um, it's got things like virtual backgrounds. To be honest, I'm not a fan of virtual backgrounds in any platform, so I'm not really going to go into that. It's got the same kind of things as you've got in Zoom. You can upload your own one. Uh, you can blur the background, all of that kind of stuff. However, um, uh, yeah, I prefer not to use those. I think if you are going to use a virtual background, uh, then uh, I would would still recommend just use Ecamm, use their green screen feature, um, and then you're going to get a much better sort of key uh, because all of these virtual background uh, things are, uh, I don't think, give a, give a professional look really because of just the quality. And this is applies to Zoom, uh, to Teams, to, to, to everything. So yeah, I'm not a fan of uh, meeting backgrounds. Another thing, though, that I think is great, and when I did the uh, the Ecamm tool, uh, the Ecamm uh, Creator Camp workshop with uh, with Dan, and we were talking about um, the, our whole session was about online presentations using Ecamm into your meeting platforms. And one of the things that uh, we talked through there was this uh, this checklist that you go through when you start up a meeting. Keyboard Maestro's got an update. Okay, I won't do that just now. Let me move that out of the way. <laughs> Remind me later. Um, but we talked about all of these different settings that you can go through um, at sort of startup. Well, one of the things I like about Vivo Meetings is it's got these different um, uh, meeting modes, as it calls them. Um, and it's basically just an easy way to sort of have some presets set up for these different kinds of things. So first of all, you've got conversation and collaboration mode. That would be just a regular meeting, basically, as you know, you would be probably expecting. So as it says, all participants can activate their webcam, they can share their screen, upload a document, uh, present a document, use the whiteboard, and basically, you know, it's just a totally interactive, collaborative uh, meeting. Um, they've then got this other one, which they call uh, Q&A or classroom mode. Uh, as it says, uh, ideal for, let me play, let me read that for you. Ideal for online classes, uh, meet, prayer meetings, company meetings, or training sessions, any small to mid-sized group where interaction is important, but only those you have chosen to present will be able to share any content. So it's basically everyone can see each other, you're all in there, but you just want to restrict the uh, the sharing ability to people who are going to be sort of the main sort of presenters. So if you were doing like a, a workshop or something like that, you may want to have that so that people can still see each other and interact, um, but only moderate moderators. Uh, and by the way, in this sense, moderators is classed as the host, or what you might think of as a co host. So in zoom, you have co hosts, uh, this would be a class as a moderator, I quite like that term, actually, uh, because you know, there is a, a host, but the moderator is somebody's potentially in the background, um, or at least, you know, just sort of helping to uh, keep people in, tra in <laughs> on track and things like that. So it's actually quite a good name for it rather than the, a co host. But in any case, I always kind of think of my co-hosts as moderators in that respect. Um, and so they will be the only ones that are able to sort of present, uh, use the whiteboard and uh, things like that. Uh, next, they've got presentation and webinar mode, which is, as you might expect, more like a sort of webinar. Um, and this, it says, uh, as you can see, uh, there's a waiting room automatically set up. All participants will be joined as muted and they cannot unmute themselves. So that's the thing about a webinar. Usually when you're thinking about the difference between a meeting and a webinar, uh, webinars, you know, the other participants can't necessarily see each other uh, they can't come on audio at all either it's uh, very much a sort of more like sort of one directional uh, and so on uh, they've then got this additional one which is called focus mode um, now this is probably actually um, more to do with um, uh, uh, it, uh, it's a sort of hybrid I guess between a webinar and a meeting because here uh, they have access to uh, activate their webcam. So it's kind of like a webinar, but where you can bring people up onto the screen as well. Um, so uh, that's the sort of difference. Beside the org organizer and moderators, uh, the, uh, any participants can be spotlighted by a moderator. Um, uh, so they can still see their own video, uh, but only other participants will see um, those that, uh, uh, you know, those that are on spotlight. So it's, it is a little bit like a hybrid, which I think is an interesting thing, because uh, usually if you're making the distinction between either a webinar or a meeting, you've got two options, either folks can see each other or, or they can't in the webinar, whereas this gives you this 
ability to sort of, you know, bring somebody out of that as well. So I like this idea of focus modes and we're looking in the settings here. So this is what you're setting as your sort of default meeting mode. Uh, as you can see here, that's your default, but you can change this on a meeting by meeting basis. And in fact, if I go to the schedule here, uh, this is uh, a, a different window I've got open now for where we schedule a meeting. You can see how you can give it a title, the start and uh, the start time and so on, but you've got here where you're selecting the type of meeting it is. So if I click on that, you can just choose any one of those. Incidentally, you can also uh, change this in meeting as well. So if I just pop over to that meeting for a second here, we've got going, uh, let me see, I think I've just clipped the top of that out. There we go, <laughs> that we need to see that bit. Uh, so here you can uh, change the conversation style um, and here we're in a this type, but if I wanted to switch this part way through, um, I, could, uh, I could do that. It may be that you wanna have a, uh, you're doing, let's say you're doing a workshop, in fact, a good example of this would be the workshops that I do in the Take One Tech Academy, uh, link down in the description to that as well. Uh, but every month I do a, uh, a workshop for that. And the first hour is basically me delivering content. But then the second hour is where we just having a Q&A and, and sort of discussing it all. So actually, you know, starting this out as a webinar mode, where it's just very much sort of one directional with me doing the presentation in this example. Um, but then, you know, partway through after after I've delivered the main content, then switching it to a collaboration mode where everyone comes on camera, uh, it would be a great, uh, a great way to do that. So I like that sort of flexibility that you can sort of switch from webinar uh, to uh, to a regular meeting sort of mid view uh, or mid uh, mid meeting is a great little uh, a great little feature so I'll just come back to the uh, the settings again here um, and we've got uh, waiting room and hold music so uh, you can choose your music incidentally this is what I'll talk about the different tiers in a moment uh, I think that this uh, choosing the hold music the music that plays when people are in the waiting room I think that that is one of the higher uh, tier features uh, but anyway, I shall uh, just come through here. Uh, next, we have got in here, we've got, uh, where is it? Uh, recording and live streaming. So um, as in uh, as in Zoom, you can stream to YouTube from uh, the platform as well. So uh, if you want to start your meeting up in here, but then have it be streamed out for uh, people who are just watching, uh, you can uh, you can do that here as well. The other thing I like here is you can specify uh, the layout. So Zoom is sometimes a little bit limited in the layouts uh, when you are recording, um, uh, or at least sometimes it feels like you don't necessarily have full visibility of what it is going to be uh, doing. Whereas here, you can just simply choose what you want. Um, so preferred layout for audio and video recordings and live streams, either the gallery view, the speaker view um, with the tiles down the side um, or speaker only. So obviously, if you were streaming to YouTube um, and you're doing a thing where you've got a class, let's say, or a workshop and you want the participants to see it, but you also want to stream to YouTube, then you may want to just do the speaker only uh, to be uh, to be going to YouTube. And it could be that maybe even you start this as a webinar, uh, you're going into your Zoom, uh, your uh, your meeting rather, um, and then you're streaming out to YouTube in this speaker view, um, but then you end the stream in, uh, in YouTube uh, and then switch the meeting style to this, uh, this more collaborative style. So there's plenty of options there. Um, uh, you can also um, change this one, preferred recording and streaming layout when someone is presenting a file uh, or their screen in the meeting. So you might want speaker only, uh, but if that person is sharing their screen, then obviously you want to capture that as well. So you might have a sort of combination of, uh, of, two, in, uh, of two in these. So, um, uh, so yeah, these are uh, just different, uh, different options here. Um, and it, it's not necessarily that, uh, you know, <laughs> Zoom and things can't do these. What I just found refreshing about this was uh, one thing that I'm constantly on calls with people about aside from audio. That's the biggest thing that people book consultation calls. Uh, incidentally, if you would like to uh, uh, have a chat about anything, uh, you can go ahead and book a call with me at uh, takeonetech.io slash consultation to talk about meeting tech. Uh, audio and things like that. But uh, yeah, the people who book calls with me um, are talking about uh, audio. But another one that comes up a lot is Zoom settings and how do I enable this or disable this? And I just found that the uh, the settings here, uh, there's never more than a few things on each screen. So it's very easy to find. And it's just not so uh, not so bloated with uh, with other things either. So 
So that is the uh, the recording uh, and live streaming. Uh, and as you can see, we're actually at the bottom of the list. I haven't obviously gone through all of these, but uh, I just found that it's uh, it's quite a sort of simplistic approach to things with uh, seemingly sort of everything that you might need for just sort of general uh, general meetings. Uh, there is obviously still a place for Zoom for uh, certain things as well. So it's uh, not to, uh, to dis dismiss Zoom entirely. However, um, I just think that for a lot of people, this might be uh, might be all that they uh, they are looking for. Um, so with that said, let's just um, take a look at the uh, scheduling just once again, because uh, this is another thing that's pretty simple. So if I click on the uh, the schedule, uh, we did uh, sort of talk about this, but you can set things like whether you want to record automatically. Um, another feature that this has um, at one of the uh, the levels, uh, I'll talk about the, uh, the tiers in a moment, but it also has the option to automatically generate um, uh, uh, basically uh, a transcript. The word was escaping me there, so it's. A, <laughs> I should have just read it, shouldn't I? So it automatically generates a uh, a transcript of the meeting, but it also highlights key terms and things like that as well. So basically, when the meeting ends. I just get emailed a transcript and then also the highlights of the meeting as well. Uh, and you can set it if you want to automatically uh, live stream. So if you were setting this up, uh, as I mentioned, uh, maybe you might want to set it up as a webinar, for example. So we click on save there uh, and then maybe automatically live stream that uh, to the uh, different platforms. Um, so you can uh, you can set that in there as well. Um, and yeah, so this um, this transcript uh, concept is something that came up. And in fact, that's why I think we started talking about this in the Take One Tech Academy Q&A uh, was because we were looking for transcript options for uh, for Zoom. Um, and yeah, those are basically add ons. So you're there is there is one that's sort of built into Zoom. I'm not really uh, uh, <laughs> I haven't been a fan of what that gives out. Uh, there are other platforms like otteret.ai uh, that you can use with Zoom. But again, that's another subscription on top. So it's just nice to see that at one of the levels, it has that uh, that built in here. Um, so uh, that's in terms of scheduling. Let's just actually come back to uh, the uh, the meeting. In fact, before I do, let's take this in a logical step. We've done the settings. We've looked at scheduling. There's one other feature that it's got built into its menus, um, and that is uh, what they call a connection test. And I thought that this was quite good as a live streamer. We're always looking for uh, you know checklists and making sure people go through uh, the correct processes. Well, built into the app is this call diagnostics test. Um, and if you just uh, click on the start, uh, the first thing it's going to do is check your microphone and check your audio. Um, so it's actually seeing live now the levels that are coming in. Uh, and it's saying speaking to your microphone is the meter below moving. It's as simple as that. So click on yes. Uh, next is audio playback. So that just played something back. It probably didn't come into the stream because it came through the same channel as the uh, as the, the, the as the Ecamm is on. However, I heard it. So that was the audio playback here. It's just doing a speed test for us, um, uh, which actually looks a little bit on the slow side today. Uh, hmm, I wonder what's going on with my internet. Te technically, <laughs> that should be uh, a gig up and down. So uh, that's a little bit uh, weird on my side. I might, must have to get onto my, my provider about that. Uh, but clicking on the uh, continue, uh, now it's going to check the uh, video. Um, and it's going to just check if we can see our, our video feed. Um, and so we can click on yes there. So I did think that that was quite a nice little thing just to go through, um, just to go through that process of uh, checking on all those things to make sure that, uh, uh, yeah, it's the, um, it, it, the audio, video and connection are all, uh, are all up to scratch. Um, so let's have a look at uh, some other things here let me just come over to i tell you what i'll do i'll just check in with the comments because uh, i don't want to uh, neglect uh, what folks are saying hey bicky uh by the way i saw the picture you posted in ecamm with your camera for your studio <laughs> i can't wait i can't wait to see your your setup that is an awesome uh, uh awesome camera you've got uh this is the problem when i check in with comments late is <laughs> I lose the context. Something's been glitching for you in Zoom recently. I'm not sure that might have been resolution or maybe something else. Uh, the different meeting modes feature is an awesome feature. Yeah, really, it comes down to um, simplicity as well. That's what I'm liking about it. You know, technically in Zoom, you can go in and change all of these different things. But it just seems to me that, um, you know, to switch from one to the other, uh, there's a lot of different steps that you have to take rather than just a simple button to uh, to be able to do that. I'm seeing all these options between Zoom sessions and now Vivo. 
Um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, obviously Zoom, we all know what Zoom is. Sessions is another uh, meeting platform as well. Um, uh, that isn't one that I've actually tried. I know that some other folks have. Uh, that's got some interesting uh, features as well. Um, but yeah, there's just other meeting platforms. And it's a case of, uh, you know, we all know Zoom. We all know uh, it and its uh, its powers and maybe its limitations as well. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, these are these are just some other alternatives. And so it's a case of going through and checking on the, uh, the pricing and the feature set and things like that and just deciding uh, which one is right for you. In fact, uh, what we'll do is after I go check in with these comments, we'll go and look at some of the features uh, as well is there a big difference between this and sessions oh so uh, yeah again um uh i i guess they're kind of similarly placed i haven't checked on the uh the pricing of sessions uh of late i know that there there was an offer that's now ended with um uh app sumo um so i think that that has now uh, now finished though so uh, so yeah in terms of that i've not done a full comparison but i certainly uh, will uh, hey, Chris, uh, I hope you're well too. And uh, no problems. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm late. I'll, I'll mark it down in my register. <laughs> um, so uh, do you know if it integrates with Calendly like Zoom does? Uh, now, here's the thing. They are actually working on their own um, uh, Calendly sort of alternative. So uh, this is another thing when we think about, you know, all the different things that we have um uh you know around scheduling our calls in zoom i mentioned the you know something like otter ai which is an ai transcript thing which is a paid add-on or a paid service uh, then there's calendly that's another subscription uh, so they are developing uh, or have developed uh, their own um uh, meeting scheduling platform um but if i just go over to their website it does also integrate with um uh, you know things like zapier um and this is their uh, their one so they've got vivo calendar um, and that would essentially replace uh, Calendly. So uh, this is an appointment scheduler uh, that's, uh, that they've got that sort of integrates with, uh, with, uh, with Vivo, Vivo meetings. Um, so, um, so yeah, so it, th there isn't a direct Calendly uh, plugin, uh, uh, but there is a, um, what do they call it? Uh, it's happy integration. So technically you could just link it uh, like that. Um, and then link it with, you know, Google and all of those kind of things as well. Um, the meeting transcript is, yeah, and it's uh, it's great that it's just kind of, uh, it's built into one of the tiers. Um, ah, Chris, yeah, original sound for musicians. Uh, yeah, that's the thing that has been uh, glitching even when turned on. Oh, interesting. Oh, that is interesting. So you've I've been having some issues when it's been on. Hmm. Um, so uh oh right so uh our sessions is still on uh, app sumo as well i should probably go and get that and do the uh do the full comparison then as well <laughs> um okie dokie so let's uh let's whilst we're uh, just sort of talking about features and functionality let's come over to here and uh i'll start with where let's just start with the pricing uh, because this is something that sets it apart from uh zoom already so zoom there are uh uh, I guess three tiers, there's the pro, there's the enterprise, and there's the education. I'm, I'm missing one there. But I mean, like the one that I'm on, uh, I pay for it annually on Zoom. Um, and that works out at I think about 16, 17 dollars a month amortized over the, the 12 months, or whatever. Um, so these are the plans, though, on Vivo meetings. So starting from $2.50 a month. Um, so if you're doing like occasional meetings and you're looking for something that is more full featured um, than uh, than the basic account with Zoom, where you've got that limitation on the time of the meeting and so on, the duration of the meeting, uh, then two dollars fifty a month seems a lot more uh, a, lot, a lot more manageable. The other thing about this is all of these plans have this resolution feature that I was talking about. Incidentally, let me just sort of demonstrate that. <laughs> By the way, because that was the thing that really grabbed my attention straight off. I'm just going to come over into this meeting. I'm going to go into my camera settings here, uh, video settings. Let's go to audio and video settings. Uh, and this is the setting. So uh, here you can just choose. Uh, maybe you've got a poor connection and you just want to say, OK, let's just use the standard definition. Um, or maybe you want to go a little bit higher. Or if you are doing some sort of presentation uh, where you've got on-screen text and things like that, uh, then you can just switch into full HD. That is a feature across all of their plans. So whatever plan you're on with Vivo, you can actually choose your resolution. And that is the thing that for me really just grabbed my attention. Being in the Ecamm community, using virtual cameras, 
really being an advocate for just leveling up your on-screen presence by using live production software into your meetings to take things, you know, all the things that I do on my live streams, switching scenes, switching cameras, all of that kind of stuff. Um, then, you know, using a virtual camera with Ecamm into, uh, into Vivo, you can just select the resolution. Now, obviously, uh, there is there is always a limitation. If you've got, you know, really slow uh, internet, really poor resolution, you're on dial-up, uh, dare I say it. I don't think anyone is anymore, are they? Um, but, um, but yeah, the resolution may be lower depending on your network condition. So if you have, you know, really poor network, um, then it may be that it drops. But generally, um, the fact is, it's available to everyone on every plan. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't have all of these other hoops that you need to jump through that some people aren't even aware of in, in Zoom. Like, you have to actually, even if you're on a pro, pro plan, you have to contact Zoom to enable it. Then you have to enable it in your web settings. Then you have to enable it in your desktop settings. Then you have to be in full screen. A guest has to be in full screen. And also your guest has to have the bandwidth as well. So it's, there's all these different hoops, whereas here it's just very clear. <laughs> Whatever plan you're on, you go into the meeting, just enable full HD. Uh, so this is something that is available to, to everyone. Uh, the other thing that I pay extra for in Zoom is Zoom Webinar. So Zoom Webinar is a separate product uh, to the uh, to the meetings. Um, whereas here, um, everybody has the uh, the webinar mode included. So that thing where you're choosing the style, if you want to run webinars, <laughs> I mean, I forget exactly the my plan for Zoom is whatever it is, a hundred and uh, 40, 50, $150 a, mo uh, a year. Um, and then I pay extra for Zoom webinar. Um, and uh, that is dependent on the number of participants. But I, I can't just remember how much that is as an add on, but it's like $30 a month or something like that, or $20 a month. I forget exactly. Um, and I also pay extra for extra Zoom cloud storage for recordings as well. Here, though, um, the uh, the recordings are included. And then also webinar mode is included as well. Uh, there is a limit with the uh, participants, so 12 participants on this uh, this lower plan. But if you're using this for something like, um, uh, uh, you know, coaching calls, things like that, small groups, small workshops, uh, then uh, then that is uh, that is fine though. Um, and then, as you can see, the uh, the pricing goes from 250, 890, 1250 to uh, 18 basically, 17.99. Uh, so let's take a look at um, a comparison chart then just to go through uh, and be clear about what some of those differences are. Um, so there is, uh, let me see which ones of these are, uh, I think are useful. As you can see, most of these features are just applying to all of them. And obviously, the link to this is in the description. It's pinned at the top of the, uh, the chat as well. So you can go through and uh, I won't just go through all of these yourself. Uh, that one, I, I did actually highlight that, the custom hold mu music in the waiting room. So yes, that's either a plus or a pro feature. Uh, that might not be a deal breaker anyway, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, and the AI transcript. So the AI transcription is a uh, is a pro feature on the pr pro plan. But like I say, that's something that I um, looked into with Otter AI and a few others. And it was a, a pay plan in any case for those kinds of things. So um, yeah, that's where that is. It's built into that uh, that pro level. Um, let's see, uh, custom branding. I need to look into that one. The custom branding is not something that I've, uh, looked at. Um, and then, uh, the recording is a plus and pro feature, uh, and above as well. Um, so anyway, there's a link to this and it is a, an affiliate link. So I'll full disclosure about that too in the description and in the top of the chat. Uh, but if you want to go and try it out, there is obviously, as with all these things, a, a 14 day uh, free trial. So you can go and test it out and see, uh, see what's, uh, uh, what you think of it. But let's jump over to uh, that meeting that I had uh, going because I just do want to talk through the interface. Really, I'm sure you will find your way around very quickly. I've got a meeting going at the moment that's basically <laughs> me, my iPad and my iPhone. Uh, Billy Nomates here talking to himself as usual. <laughs> uh, but this is what the meeting interface looks like. So I've got the, uh, this is just the the app on my computer. And as I say, that code to enable the virtual camera is, uh, is in the description as well. Um, the, the usual things that you would expect. Um, I've disabled streaming, so that's why this doesn't show up. But if I wanted to initiate a stream, I could do that here. Uh, the recording, I can start a recording from there. You've got a whiteboard, um, as uh, you're familiar with in other platforms too. Uh, now start sharing. Uh, one of these that I liked was just really quickly being able to get into uh, either sharing your screen, uh, files, and so on. But I like this uh, option just really 
easy to access right there, which is share an additional camera. So if I wanted to come in here and uh, let's see if I get the right one. No, not that one. <laughs> there you go. So if you wanted to uh, just share, you know, a top down camera and you still wanted to be on the screen, as you can see, I've got my uh, my other camera there. So I like that idea. I've just been able to uh, to quickly uh, come in and, uh, and and sort of share a secondary camera if you wanted to. And I'm just going to stop sharing that for the time being. But that was just a nice little uh, feature that uh, uh, I, I know technically you can do that in Zoom if you go through the sharing and so on. But it was just a very easy way to add that in. And that's something that, you know, I, although I use Ecamm Virtual Camera, obviously, uh, but often in calls, there is a need to just say, hey, let, let me show you this from another angle or a you know, the top down or whatever. So, um, so yeah, it's useful to have that right there. Uh, mute and camera, no point to going into that too much. You can see all your different cameras gives you a, a preview. That's a, a nice little thing that you do see the preview of all of your cameras. So if you're not sure which one it is, if you've got multiple cam links plugged in, <laughs> as I do, uh, the usual thing here, send a reaction, raise your hand and so on. Uh, then over this side, this is all the stuff related to participants. I don't know about you, but um, in Zoom, I find that now the bottom bar is getting a little bit full with things. And sometimes uh, it might not. <laughs> I know when I'm speaking to people, they're not sure where things are. Whereas over here, you've got the central things, which are the sort of core uh, functionality. Over on the right is things related to participants. Uh, so you can create a poll just directly in here. You can set that up in advance as well in that scheduling page. Um, so uh, yeah, you can uh, do that there. Um, then you've got... Uh, uh, chat so this is where you can obviously set what you want in terms of here public and private chat uh, public chat only so uh, this is something that we talked about again in the uh, uh, the workshop uh, that I did at um, Ecamm Live Creator Camp uh, where we we're talking about the different types of meeting you have um, and the different permissions that you have for chat so if you're doing something that is like a really close group um, of people that, you know, know each other, um, then allowing public and private chat, I think is fine. You know, you don't mind if somebody sends somebody else a private message, uh, you know, whilst they're in the meeting. Uh, however, if you're doing anything where the people are essentially strangers to each other, maybe it's like an event that you're running, uh, you really only want to have public chat or chat with moderators only or disable it. You don't want people to be able to just direct message people privately who maybe they don't know because there may be people then who get unwanted attention um and uh, so yeah you definitely don't want to uh, to to have that enabled as it is those different conversation styles this is one of the things i like about this is once you select one of these it's kind of handling that for you anyway so it's making you know the chat uh, so that people can only chat with moderators co-hosts or whatever you want to call them so uh, so there is that but you can just come in and change it here as well uh, again this is you know common across lots of platforms but i just like the implementation of it Next, you've got uh, participants. So this is your participant list. Uh, if you want to make somebody a moderator, so again, just to clarify, that is kind of like a co-host. A co uh, if I just click on that person, uh, now they've got the little star next to their name. That means that they are a moderator, a co-host. Uh, you can just click on that and uh, remove that permission. Sorry, iPad promoted and demoted. <laughs> um, and then you've also got uh, here, uh, you know, pin spotlight. So if you want to spotlight someone, make them full screen, you can do that all in here, send them back to the waiting room. If they've been a naughty boy or girl, <laughs> uh, I'll remove them from the uh, from the meeting. Uh, you can also initiate a one to one meeting here as well. So let's say that somebody was a moderator, uh, and then somebody in the group was experiencing an issue, the moderator could then go and say, well, let me just initiate a one on one meeting. And it basically takes takes them into a little breakout room, they can sort out whatever they've got to do and then uh, and then bring them back. So it just seemed like it's got all the functionality that you uh, would need. Uh, it's got the invite there. So that's going to give you a link to uh, to share out as well with uh, with other folks. Um, then we've got meeting details. So that's a quick way as well to get to the meeting details. If you want to share the uh, the link out to the meeting, I won't do that right now because this is a live meeting. <laughs> um, and then you can also just see that's the number of participants, but you can open and close the participants panel uh, from up there as, uh, as well. Uh, in terms of views, though, uh, you've got the obvious gallery view, which is what we're in right now. Um, you can also change that to be a sort of left sidebar so you can see the participants down here, uh, the bottom sidebar bar view like that as well. So you've got a few options there in terms of what you do. When you are in gallery view, uh, you can change the, uh, the page size to so the number of participants on the screen at any one time. Uh, and you can also toggle on and off the self view from here. So this is something that, um, uh, you know, if I'm on a Zoom call with somebody 
um, then uh, or multiple people I might want to hide my own view so that I don't see myself so that the other people take up more on the screen uh, so that's nice and easy to get to from here as well so I can just toggle off show myself um, and this one automatic p2p view um, that one is basically saying that if ever you're on a call with just one person, it's going to default to you only see them, which is great, actually, because if you have it in Zoom, for example, where you hide yourself view, the next time you go into a call, you will also be uh, hidden. Uh, whereas actually, you may want it that you're only hidden when you're on a call with two people uh, with you and one other person. Uh, but when you're on with multiple, there may be a reason why you want to see yourself. So I like that sort of little bit of uh, granularity there with uh, with that. Um, and then uh, obviously changing light and dark mode, you can override the system theme, but I shall leave that uh, dark for uh, for now. And here you can uh, manage and create breakout rooms as well. So uh, you can automatically assign or uh, you know, set those up from there. So if you've got a bigger group and you're splitting people off, then you can do that from uh, there. Uh, you can also get into the, uh, the settings here. So you can get into all the full uh, settings and you can also change that recording layout as well. So uh, that recording layout we talked about earlier, um, if you wanna do part of the meeting where it's uh, you know you uh, as the main speaker but then you're going to go over to the q a maybe part way through you want to switch over that recording uh, so you can do that uh, just there as well so as i say in general i just liked the sort of functionality that you've got here and some of the implementation of this uh, looks um uh yeah you know it's, it's just a nice implementation nice clean uh, interface um so uh, chris uh, you should do a comparison between app sumo and setup uh, set app so i use both of those actually and they are different so with Setup, you are paying a monthly subscription and you get access to over 200 uh, great uh, utility style apps. Um, I should uh, say that there's a link to Setup and affiliate link in the uh, description as well. Uh, but basically, you're paying a single fee and you're getting access to all of the apps. And I find that it is a really, really well curated uh, list of apps. And so if anything is in there, I generally know that it's a great, uh, it's going to be a great quality app, you know, anything that's, uh, 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 yeah, if, it, if it's not, if it's not going to be a useful or great app, it's not going to be in there. That's not to say that I use all of them. I don't use every setup app at all. However, if I'm looking for something, I'll generally go and just check if there is one in there. And uh, it's, you know, I know that a lot of the apps that I use before setup um, are, are, in there and so when i when i signed up to set up it was like oh great that you know iStat menus is in there yeah you know, all of these other ones that have been a staple on my computer for uh, for years are, are, are included so uh, that's what setup is it is a single subscription to over 200 utility style apps uh, you have a sort of little mini app store uh, built into uh, into your computer then uh, which is uh, basically what the app store should be because the problem with the app store uh, he says just trying to grab setup and open it up the thing with the app store is um, that uh, the Mac app store is there's just so much in there and you never really know if something is is great or not. However, with setup, uh, you have this uh, this setup app store app that basically sits on your computer uh, and it's so easy to just go and grab things and install them. Uh, the other thing that's great about this is uh, and here are, you know, just some of the uh, some of the apps that are on there. Um, uh, <laughs> I won't mention Downey. I did mention, I did do a whole video about Downey, about downloading videos from uh, from the internet. And that got me a little uh, slap on the wrist by YouTube because they don't like you telling people how to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's got all of these different utility apps. And if I wanted to uh, add one of those, I, I could just literally click here and then click on uh, install uh, and it would install it onto, in fact, this one is actually just an iPad app. So there is iPad and iOS apps in there as well. Let's choose one that I haven't got. It's better touch tool. Uh, so I could install that from here um, and it would just install directly on my computer. Uh, the other great thing about um, setup is because you've got access to all these apps, there may be something that you only need to use once, um, but it's going to be, uh, you know, save you a lot of time. Well, you might come down here and choose the particular app that you want. Um, uh, let's look, convert and calculate in notes. I don't know what that one is exactly, some sort of calculator. Let's say I just needed to do something um, quickly. I could go and download the app, do whatever it does, and then offload it again. And it hasn't cost me any more because it's all part of the setup subscription. So that's what setup is. AppSumo is something which is uh, often for web-based applications rather than desktop apps, although not always. Uh, it is also desktop apps as well, but often it is software as a service type things. Um, and usually it's something that is uh, on a subscription model themselves. Um, and what they're doing in AppSumo is they're giving you the option to uh, sometimes you get like a lifetime deal instead of signing up uh, for the monthly plan. And 
the, the, the sort of apps that usually feature on AppSumo are by their nature usually kind of fairly early on. Um, they're early on in their development. They are startups and they're looking to get uh, you know, a big user base up front. And so they're giving really good incentives to people uh, to sign up to these deals uh, because they just want to expand their user base. And so you don't really tend to find really, really well-established companies and applications in AppSumo. It's very much like a, a sort of startup type place. Um, and so that's the, that's the reason for them being on there. Obviously, if you, I mean, one, one example of this I'll give is an application I use called Radar or a service I use called Radar uh, for social media planning. Uh, now, the regular price for it is $50 a month. However, I got into that when it was on AppSumo and I got a lifetime deal for $50. So basically for the cost of one month, they gave me a whole lifetime access to it because they were just trying to rapidly grow their user base. Um, so that's kind of the difference. G generally, AppSumo is software as a service that's usually a subscription thing, but you often get the option to just get a lifetime deal on it. Um, and often they are sort of web-based apps as opposed to um, you, you know Mac-based utility apps. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the core uh, difference there. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's a great way to get a, a, an amazing deal on software when you're getting a lifetime deal for something that otherwise would be a subscription. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's me, <laughs> Billy No Mates, here in the northeast of Thailand, talking to myself uh, day in, day out into this camera. <laughs> um, uh, the AppSumo deal, um, so this, so this uh, Vivo is not in AppSumo. It was the other platform that is in AppSumo. And I'm not sure what the deal is with, uh, with that. But, uh, but yeah, that is in AppSumo though. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think as long as I don't make a video about it, Rich, um, I might be all right. Um, but yes, I, I can't recommend Downy at all. <laughs> Please don't use it. Uh, I never use it. It's, uh, it's, it's terrible, <laughs> uh, allegedly. Um, better touch tool is, so the thing is I used to use better touch tool before it was in, uh, or before I even had setup when I was using a laptop with a touch, uh, uh, you know, I was using my touch thing on. Um, and I actually, I was using a trackpad at that time. So, uh, yeah, better, uh, touch tool is for adding gesture support and things like that to your trackpad. Um, however, I only use a, a mouse these days. Um, and I was using the, uh, the Mac mini, which didn't have a trackpad, but now that I've uh, upgraded to my, um, uh, um, MacBook pro, uh, the new M3 MacBook pro, uh, which has a trackpad, I should definitely be putting a better touch tool on it. But because I use a mouse, the thing is I never build up the muscle memory for those uh, gestures as to when I use the trackpad, but I've, uh, uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a great tool, uh, nonetheless. <laughs> um, is there an app sumo suit I can wear to parties? There should be. If there isn't, there should be. They're missing a, uh, a marketing opportunity there for sure. <laughs> um, so th this has been a sort of overview of, uh, of Vivo meetings. One thing I do want to just highlight, first of all, is that they do have an upgrade plan going on for this, or a, a rather a development roadmap. And what I love about that, and you can find this on their website, if you go over to their homepage, it is right down here on their halfway down their homepage. Uh, they've got their affiliate program, video tutorials, uh, and their roadmap as well. So if you click on the roadmap, uh, that is going to take you to here. Uh, this is all the things that they've added in uh, 2023. So, you know, often you get, you know, release notes and things like that. So you can see these kind of things from companies. But what I like is that they also have, you know, what they're currently working on um, and what's coming next. You know, often companies are a little bit reluctant to say what's uh, what's in the pipeline, what's coming. Uh, however, um, they are they they do have uh, uh, a list of, you know, this is what they're working on right now. Um, so uh, Rich Tesk. Uh, billing for storage. So if you want to increase, you know, add even more storage in, uh, snooze notifications, mobile chat and UX improvements, messaging, uh, and what's coming up next. So they've got some other things here. And obviously, you know, uh, I'm sure companies are always open to uh, feature requests as well. And what's coming uh, uh, later as well. So uh, additional virtual backgrounds. So I mentioned that I'm not a fan of virtual backgrounds. And that's because generally, I don't know whether they all use the uh, the same, uh, you know, underlying frameworks or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I find that Zoom's virtual backgrounds are not uh, not great. Um, Teams 
is the worst, <laughs> which surprises me uh, that, uh, yeah, they're, they're the worst. But uh, yeah, here, as you can see, they're working on virtual backgrounds 2.0 uh, to give uh, better image processing, to give better quality for those backgrounds. But uh, yeah, that's just to show that they have uh, this, uh, this roadmap coming. Now, I mentioned that I'm doing some other things with Vivo meetings, and one of them is uh, we're actually putting on a free workshop. Uh, so this is called the Meeting Tech Mastery Workshop. And by the way, uh, this is open to everyone. You don't need to be a Vivo meetings uh, user uh, to come along to this workshop. This is actually happening next week, Monday to Friday. It's in the form of basically an hour, hour and a half session uh, every day. And you will, uh, if you go to the uh, link, which is in the description, um, and also I've just dropped it into the chat as well, you can register for this. As I say, it's a completely free event. Um, and uh, day one is going to be focused on video and lighting. Uh, day two is going to be our, all about audio. Uh, so this is, you know, platform agnostic, you know, whatever, whether you're using Zoom, Teams, Vivo meetings, whatever, um, then uh, or sessions or whatever, uh, then all of this will still be uh, relevant. So that's day one and two. It's all about leveling up your audio and video on screen in your meetings. Uh, day three is going to be about presentations and immersive presentations. I'm a big fan of doing something other than just, you know, sharing a slide deck uh, and you being a little window and the slides being over here and just talking to slides. And we'll be talking about, you know, how to present effectively uh, whatever platform uh, you're on. Uh, day four is going to be more of a deep dive into the Vivo Meetings platform. Uh, obviously, this is for their existing user base as well as new uh, potential customers. So I'll be going into more of a tutorial about the, uh, the platform itself, going into some other things that we haven't talked about here as well. Uh, so whether you're an existing user or not, uh, day four will uh, have you covered on that. Uh, and then day five is going to be talking about um, the power of live production software into your meetings. I'm obviously a massive advocate of using Ecamm Live, um, but whether you're using OBS, vMix, or anything else, um, it's going to be talking about these platforms um, and these uh, uh, sof this, this software and how it can really enhance your meeting. For me, the real thing that these uh, platforms like Ecamm and OBS add into your meetings is that it gives this fluidity, which is otherwise missing. You know, we've all been in meetings where somebody says, okay, I just want to share some figures with you. Let me go and click on screen share. Let me find the application. Uh, oh, no, it's not that one. It's this one. Where is it? And all of these things, all of these little minute little uh, interruptions actually break the flow of the meeting when you can just sort of seamlessly go from uh, you know speaking into the camera and oh let me just show you something let me just pull this up on screen and I'll just flick over to this scene or I'll flick back again uh, you know that adds this real fluidity which actually means that the the tech is getting out of the way of you communicating that's what we're trying to do we've got some sort of value that we want to give to our meeting participants whether you are an educator whether you are you know a salesperson uh, whether you are you know whatever whatever the case is uh, you've just got something that you're trying to impart some information some knowledge some uh, some value that you're trying to give um, and so we want all the tech to get out of the way and that's what I'm uh, a huge advocate of and so that is what I'll be talking about on day five is how live production software can really enhance your meetings now I say it's a five-day workshop there's actually a bonus session on the, the following Monday as well um, and that is going to be a, basically a Q&A in a Vivo meeting where you can come along experience the platform if you're not familiar with it uh, but also then get any questions answered as well so that will be definitely a, a sort of two-way you know you can come on camera if you want um, it'll be a regular meeting and then we can have a chat if there's anything you want to know about video audio lighting uh, live production software or you know whatever it is or the platform itself so uh, that is the process there will also be downloads associated with every day as well um, so if you go ahead and uh, register uh, then you'll get all the details and you'll be uh, uh, be away there on uh, uh, all through next week incidentally uh, this is obviously a live stream on YouTube. It's going to be probably up for some time after next week. <laughs> uh, so if you are watching this after this date, uh, you can still go to the website, you can still register, you can still get all the downloads, and you'll also get access to all of the replays, and you'll like, get access to the replay of that uh, that live Q&A session as well. So even if you're watching after the fact, you can still go and register and get all this value uh, for free as well. So that is a little bit about the uh, workshop. And what I'll do is I'll just check in with the, uh, the chat just uh, again. Um, hello, Alonzo. Great to see you here. New name in the uh, the chat. Great to see you. Is it possible to integration uh, Vivo integrate Vivo meetings with OBS vMix? Um, ISO feeds out NDI maybe. Um, the uh, integrating with OBS and vMix, yes. So if they've got the virtual cameras out, which uh, which uh, which they do, I'm, I'm 
I'm actually, I don't know, I'm pretty sure vMix does, but uh, I definitely know OBS does. Um, so yeah, it would just be a case of um, uh, going and putting in that, that virtual camera uh, code if you're on the Mac on the PC uh, I'm not sure about the uh, the virtual cameras thing but certainly it would work in the browser in the browser you can use uh, use any camera as well so uh, but that's what I'm doing uh, with uh, Vivo with Ecamm uh, on the Mac so I'm using the uh, virtual cameras um, in terms of ISO feeds out it doesn't have ISO feeds out it's one of the things that I've uh, I've been obviously talking <laughs> with uh, with the uh, the founders and uh, the folks there at Vivo, uh, and it's one of the things that I've specifically requested because um, I would love to have the isolated video out of uh, a Vivo meeting to be able to then use that in uh, my Ecamm productions, and that's something that yeah you can't do that with Zoom either at the moment unless you use another uh, <laughs> third party or another service which is Zoom ISO. Used to be third party Zoom I bought them, but that is another. Uh, another um, uh, monthly subscription as well. So, uh, so yeah, to answer your question, no, there is no uh, isolated video feed out um, of uh, of Vivo at the moment. But I've definitely uh, uh, I've definitely requested that myself. <laughs> We're on the same page. Uh, M3 uh, M3 Max all the way, uh, and it's great. I mean. Anybody who's watched my live streams over the past few months will know that quite often I was say <laughs> the phrase, oh dear, my computer is glitching came up a lot. Whereas actually I'm on an M3 Max. I've got my Discord running. I'm in a voice channel there. Uh, I'm streaming right now to, uh, to YouTube, obviously. Um, I'm also recording this. I'm also in a Vivo meeting. And I've also got other stuff on the network in the meeting as well. And uh, <laughs> touch wood, uh, not a single <laughs> glitch so far. So yeah, really impressed with the, uh, the M3 uh, Max. Uh, laptop uh hey chris it's getting late oh yeah thank you for staying up i appreciate you and uh oh great i look forward to uh speaking to you uh next week yeah uh so that is anybody would like to book a call um yeah i do offer consultation services but obviously if you want to just uh figure out if i might be right to uh to help uh then you can go ahead and book a discovery call so that's a 20 minute call we can just have a chat uh yeah, if there's something that I can fix there and then, then I'm happy to do that too. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to just have a chat to figure out if I might be able to help you, then you can go ahead and book that. Uh, Dan, um, the my biggest concern is in trying these is I'm already spending money on Zoom and there isn't any platform proven to take market share. Uh, do you think this has longevity? I mean, this is uh, Zoom. There's no uh, uh, no denying, you know, Zoom is ubiquitous it is the market leader it just depends on what it is that you are um what you're looking to get out of it and if you're looking for something that is uh you know as i say maybe a lower price point maybe doesn't have some of the resolution issues uh, that we have with zoom um if you are sending your links out to people and people are joining uh, what it does mean is either those people that you're sending it to would be just joining in the browser so when they click the link on the email it opens up in a browser um which you know might not be a, an issue for uh, for folks at all um or obviously you know they can download the app so if you're in a in a team for example and you're all on uh, vivo meetings then um you know that would be a uh, you know, another use case if you're you know, in your entire team you're on it um but uh, yeah i mean there is no getting away from uh, the the market share that zoom has but uh, it was just when i looked at all of the sort of features uh, of this that there are these certain things that i think tick boxes for uh, for uh, that would tick boxes for a lot of people certainly not for everybody necessary but necessarily but that is just a case of going through looking at the feature set, looking at what you've uh, got already, uh, try it out for a free trial, you know, try some of the meetings, see the experience you get with it, uh, you know, send out some meeting links to people and see the experience that they have uh, and how they, uh, they feel about that. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we will, and, and, and make that decision. <laughs> it's a bit of a, bit of a tricky one for me to say, cause I do appreciate it's not for everybody. And it's a case of evaluating all the pros and cons of uh, each one. Uh, if I switch platforms, I want to make sure it will be around uh, and in, the, in a year is what I'm getting at. Yeah, so I've, it's interesting. I'm not sure the, uh, I can't remember the exact founding date. It was, it's been around for several years already. So it's not, it's not like a new kid on the block. As I say, it did actually start out on uh, AppSumo uh, a, a few years ago. So, um, so it had its, its, you know, startup phase uh, earlier. And now they're just building out functionality and features and so on. Um, so, uh, so yes. Um, one of the things I will say to that, um, you know, is, uh, yeah, when we were looking at these kind of things, 
with a meeting platform, it's not necessarily something that you're embedded into in quite the same way as some other services. You know, if you were going to be transferring over, you know, a complete database or something to another service, um, and then you're, you're really sort of embedded in it. Meeting platforms don't really have that sort of uh, limitation. I'm not saying <laughs> just to just to give you uh, another uh, another perspective on this. If it is something that can add a cost saving and feature uh, benefits, um, then uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, it is under ongoing active development with uh, new features coming in all the time. There's some just added it out last week as well, so uh, it's certainly under active development. But yeah, it's not like it's not quite the same level of buy-in as that, let's say for me. Kajabi. Kajabi, like my whole business is based on Kajabi. Uh, I've got all my courses there and things like that. So if something to, were to happen to that, the uh, the cost of, you know, <laughs> mentally and time-wise to shift over to something else would be massive. Whereas actually a, a meeting platform is more kind of uh, what you're doing at the time, if that makes sense. I don't know if <laughs> that's a valid uh, point or if that helps you in your uh, evaluation process at all. Um, okay, so uh, with that said, if anybody's got any further questions about Vivo Meetings, obviously bring them along to that free workshop. Whether you are a Vivo Meetings user or not or interested, then uh, yeah, you can certainly check out that workshop anyway. There'll be plenty for everyone. Uh, but if you have got any other specific questions, drop them in the comments uh, in the, uh, to this video. But a much, much better place because I'll be honest, with email, with comments, with uh, social media, <laughs> it's a fire hose of, uh, of information uh, coming in or a fire hose of messages. Uh, so a much better place to actually put these uh, is, in fact, in the Discord. And that is another thing that is free to join. So go to takeonetech.io slash family. Join the Discord. If you're not familiar with Discord, don't worry. It's easy to pick up. And there's some uh, simple steps that I talk through in terms of how to get yourself set up. But that is a much better place to go and get your questions answered uh, because there, uh, first of all, there is the structure of of being able to uh, 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 see categorized different conversations. Um, but um, also you uh, then have the uh, uh, ability to get answers from other people, not just me. So whenever someone drops a comment in the, uh, the comments of a video, chances are it's me that's seeing it, nobody else. Whereas obviously in a community, you're getting the, uh, the things from, uh, from everybody else the comments and feedback from everyone else who are often <laughs> vastly more wise than I am. <laughs> hey, Michael, great to see you and uh, another UK uh, folks. So thanks for staying up. Um, Dan, so he's saying he used Cloud Presenter and Vivo meetings with clients, no real issues, as it's just a URL I send them out. So, uh, oh, that's great. Oh, so you're using Vivo as well, Ian. Fantastic. Um, uh, <laughs> Vivo La Alec, thank you very much. <laughs> Okie dokie, with that said then, uh, and on, uh, on that note, uh, I will uh, wrap it up here, but I look forward to uh, seeing you again next time. And uh, a big thank you to, uh, look at this, <laughs> I still haven't adjusted this scene with my massive head in it. A big thank you to my channel members. I just remembered two more to add into there who joined just uh, last week or so, so I'll add those in next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.